Today we're taking a quick look at cell reference locking. So what do I mean by this? So when you type in a cell reference, um, let's just say equals C1, right? And so that in the Google Sheet that links to it and if I hit enter, it's gonna show what's in cell C1. Now let's say I'm doing, let's do a, a reference here. Let's do equals sum B2 through B11, right? So what happens when I drag this over? If I drag this over, the cell reference is going to update. Now since I'm going horizontally, the only thing that's going to update is the column reference. So here we have B. If we go over here, you can see it updated to C, but it still keeps the same row reference. So this is a great way to be able to quickly drag formulas across. And I'll show you again in a second how this works. Let's go ahead. I'll just add some random numbers in here. And you can see there, 101. Let me just drag this across. And we'll do 500. You can see that adds in there, 100. And so this is a quick way to do subtotals. So here I have a simple C1 times B2. So if you imagine this, we can do a multiplication grid. Um, but let's see what happens right now if we drag this down. So we drag this down. We see some weird things. If we're, if we're thinking this is going to be 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 3, 1 times 4, that's definitely not what's happening here. And if we look down here, let's just check this one for example. What we see is we have C4 times B5. So this cell reference updated as we dragged it down, and so it's not actually populating correctly. So let's just go ahead and see what happens if I select this whole column here and then drag it out. Now it just goes nuts. And obviously this isn't doing what we're expecting it to do. So how do we solve this? So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Let's go back to here and figure out what we need to do. So first let me get rid of this. So what we need to do in this case is we want to lock it to this C1 when we drag it down. What we can do if we need to lock it um, into this actually we need to lock it to the first cell. So what we do is we put a dollar sign in front of one, hit enter. So now we have our one times 10. So let's look at what happens now if we drag this across. So I'm going to select this and drag it across. And we're still seeing something really goofy going on. So what is happening? So if we see here, this D1 reference is still working as, as we'd expect. It's staying D1. Let's go ahead and jump down here. It's still D1. So that's functioning just right the way we want it to. This should be 5 times 10, but it's not 5 times 10. Why is that? Well, let's look at our other reference. Our other reference is coming from F11. So it's coming from here. So it's not locking to this 10 like it should be. So what we need to do is we actually need to lock two references here. So we need to lock it to this first row, but we need to lock it to the second column. So let's go ahead and lock it there. Just add that dollar sign, and now we see that we got one that we're locking the row, the other one we're locking the column. So column B and row one. So let's go ahead and enter this. Now let's drag this down to apply it, and it should stay the same, nothing changed. But what happens now is if we click, select this, drag it over, and now we have our grid properly applied. So now you can see I got a 10 by 10 grid, and it multiplies out correctly. So this is doing locking one of the references, whether it's the row or the column. You can see how that works. But what happens if, let's say we have something over here. Maybe we want to have a multiplier. So we'll call this multiplier. Uh, if I can spell that correctly, multiplier. And let's just say 2.2. Or maybe uh, maybe I'll do a 120%, 1.2. 1 so now we're going to do C1 times B2 times O2. Oh, it needs to be O1. There we go. Um, as you've probably figured out by now, if I drag this, it's not going to work properly. So what do I need to do here? So this is locking the row. This is locking the column. What we actually need to do is lock both. So that's solved by simply doing dollar sign, dollar sign. So now, if we drag this down and then drag it over, you'll see that it works just as we'd expect. So that O1 stays locked, and these have stayed locked to the row 
and the column respectively. So now we have 10 times 10 times 1.2, which is 120. And that is how locking both references work.